So what's going on, everybody? My name is Tidon. This is my buddy Chris Crouch and Comfort Bear. Hey, what's up? Hey, guys. Today we're going to be doing a uh, video talking about creative long exposure photography, as well as delving a little bit into light painting. Um, this will actually be a two-part video. Today's video is going to uh, kind of focus more on uh, a photo that I had done a little while back that actually featured Chris here um, because I had gotten a couple questions about how I actually was able to uh, produce the photo. Um, so we're going to be going over that. Tomorrow's video, uh, Chris will actually be taking over and uh, kind of explaining how he uses some of uh, the similar techniques uh, to create some of the portraits that he's done recently and uh, he's going to walk you through those and uh, I'll actually be his subject tomorrow. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're not going to recreate the actual photo, but I figured we just set something up really quick to uh, try and do the best we could to demonstrate some of the uh, um, things that we did um, in that photo to uh, bring it to life. So um, what you can see here is um, this will be the camera. This is a Nikon D5100. Um, I'll be using this camera to take the shots. And I just want to go and show you some of the settings uh, that I'll be using on this. So again, this is a Nikon D5100. Um, I'm actually using the kit lens, the 18 to 55 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 Nikon kit lens. Um, the settings I'm gonna be using for this particular shot um, is going to be, I'll be shooting at ISO 100, uh, f4.5 um, with a shutter speed of 20 seconds, um, and that is to give me enough time to make myself around the room uh, to do what I need to do. Um, these lights that are on right now are, uh, are really just on to, uh, for, for while we're setting things up so we can kind of move around without tripping over everything here. Um, it's kind of a small room, so we don't have a whole lot of uh, space uh, to move around. Um, or even to really have a very big backdrop. So we're just kind of doing the best we can here. So now the idea is, is we've got Chris um, right here in front of the black screen, um, and he's gonna be holding the bear. Um, and the idea is, is that we're going to use a light source, a smaller uh, concentrated light source uh, and a constant light source. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut all the lights off. We're gonna continue filming um, but we're going to shut all the lights off and then all you should see is I'm actually going to use my cell phone here. Um, my cell phone here is actually going to be the light and I'm going to actually walk over here. And when I start um, the 30 second shutter and the, once the lights are off and I start the 30 second shutter, I'll be holding this out and I'm actually going to walk behind him while basically moving uh, the phone up and down slowly as I walk past him to uh, create kind of just a wavy uh, light streak behind him. And that basically is going to represent um, these streaks from the, the cars in the photo. So if you've, uh, if you've seen the photo, um, which I had showed at the beginning of the video, the uh, red and white streaks that you see going down the road, um, this is going to simulate that and kind of how those were captured. Um, the next, we'll be taking another photo, uh, which is going to incorporate not only the streaks from the phone, but we'll also um, incorporate, uh, grab down here for a second, um, incorporate a single flash. And this is a Triopo, uh, I think it's a T, TR980N. Um, so this one's specifically for Nikon. And the settings that I'm gonna be using on the flash here is I'm going to set the zoom all the way to 180 millimeters because I want it to be as concentrated um, as possible. I don't want a widespread, widespread flash. And the uh, sync speed, uh, the flash speed is gonna be 1 64th of a second. And this is to give me um, just enough light to really light him without um, creating too much spillover, lighting the room up too much. And then I'll do one more photo where I'll incorporate the streaks. I'm gonna flash him, and then I'm also going to step over here 
and flash the bear. And the reason why I'm demonstrating all of this is because I, I just want to show you guys that um, basically the photo that I did, all those lighting scenarios, lighting the sign, the cars running um, through the backdrop, um, lighting Chris, lighting the ground around him, lighting up the car, that was actually done all in one 30 second exposure. Um, and this is just to show you that with these long exposures in, in, in darkness like this, that you don't have to worry about stepping in front of your camera as much as you have to just worry about where your light is falling and, um, and, and not being in front of the camera when you are using your light in order to, you know, avoid blocking out the, um, the light source or accidentally capturing yourself in the photo. So uh, I'm actually gonna be handing the camera off to my girlfriend, Vanessa, and she is going to be manning the camera while I help demonstrate this for you guys. All right, so I went ahead and shut off the light over here. I went ahead and shut the door so I didn't get any ambient light coming through the uh, kitchen. Um, all I have up right now is just the one light over here. And what I'm gonna be doing is this, my camera is now set um, on a timer. Um, so once I hit the shutter, um, there's gonna be a 10 second delay before the shutter actually um, goes ahead and opens for that. Uh, and actually I'm gonna do a 20 second exposure um, and basically that'll give me enough time to come over here, shut off this other model light, and get myself around over to here where I'm going to then produce the, uh, the streaks um, that I talked about. Um, and again, I'll be using just my cell phone and just turning this on and basically just moving this. I don't have to worry about any of the text on the phone because it's all just going to be a big blur of light anyways. Um, and you know, the thing about this, just to remember, is that you don't have to worry about yourself being in the frame um, as long as you are not spilling any of the light from your light source onto yourself. Um, at that point, you may end up with some ghosting, you know, get yourself caught in the, uh, in the shot. So I'm um, going to go ahead and demonstrate now. This is going to be the first shot where we're just going to demonstrate just what um, uh, the streaking would look like with nothing else exposed. So we're gonna go ahead and start this. Come over here and shut the light off. And it's gonna be a bit pitch black for a moment. And once that shutter goes, now I'm gonna go ahead and start moving now that the shutters have been released. And I'm just gonna move this up and down as I walk behind Chris here. And then I'm just gonna stop, turn off the, uh, turn off the light here. And it's gonna be dark for a moment. I'll probably fast forward through most of this. Um, while the rest of that 20 second shutter uh, finishes up. All right, so the shutter has went ahead and closed. So we can go ahead and turn these lights back on. All right, and um, up on the screen, you'll see the, uh, the results of that particular photo, um, just to kind of get an idea of, of those streaks with nothing else exposed there. So now this time, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. Um, I actually am bumping the uh, shutter speed up to 30 seconds uh, because we just tried it. 20 seconds wasn't a long enough time for me to, to get around to everything. So uh, 30 second shutter on this one. Uh, set the timer to 10 seconds. And we're gonna go ahead and do this again. And this time it's gonna be combining the streak, uh, the foam, um, creating the streaks in the back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pop the flash one time on Chris to expose just him. So let's go ahead and start. <clears throat> kind of use your phone to guide yourself if need be until the shutter goes off. And shutter's off, so we'll go ahead and start making those streaks. You can really do anything you like here. And then go ahead and quickly, you can turn your light on after you get past the camera, as long as it's not picking up in the sensor, get in position and go ahead and flash him once. And then we'll just wait for that shutter to go ahead and close. And I'll go ahead and fast forward through this. Um, it's right after the uh, shutter closes. All right, so now that the shutter has closed, um, we can go ahead and turn the lights back on. Get 
that turn on. All right. <clears throat> And this will be the, uh, the last photo. <clears throat> so I went ahead and, and you should have seen the uh, photo on your screen there from the result of, of both the phone and the single flash together. And now what we're gonna do is <clears throat> the same thing, go behind him, move the phone up and down, um, come around and we're gonna flash him, but this time we're gonna come back, I'm gonna come back over here and flash the bare side this time. And then you'll get to see the results of all three um, uh, different lighting uh, angles all in the same photo. So again, 30 second exposure. So 30 second exposure. We're going to set the timer to, I have a 10 second timer to give me time. And we'll go ahead and do this again. I use a, and you can use your phone to guide you. Like I said, the only thing you have to worry about when, when using things like that to guide you, especially if it's pitch black, is just that you know you don't step in front of the camera and that you don't have any bleed over. So like here I can use my phone to kind of guide myself around. And go ahead and get in position and we're gonna go ahead and flash him there. Come back around over here and flash this side. And I'll just wait for the shutter to close. All right, and the shutter has closed. And what we have here is the final product, which you should see on your screen right now. All right, and so that was basically it. Um, that is, for the most part, how we produce that photo. Um, it took us about an hour and a half, two hours, um, kind of stumbling around in the dark. Um, and the longest part of that photo was waiting for cars to come by because we really wanted to capture those streaks. We feel like that was a big part of what really made that photo kind of stand out um, and kind of make it feel a little more magical, a little more, uh, um, I guess, interesting. And so that was the longest part was just kind of waiting for those cars to come by. But really it was that simple. It's that simple to, to create so you can get out there and do it yourself. Um, the, the key things to remember are you know, watch your light. Um, if you notice that you're getting too much spill over onto something, you can do things such as reducing the power on your flash and just get a little bit closer. Or you can do things like, you know, create snoots or some type of way to keep the light from spilling in a direction um, to help kind of guide your light right to where you want it. Uh, but really it's just have fun with it. If you guys have any questions, or uh, have any comments, uh, feel free to uh, post in the comment section. Um, and also if you guys you know, use this technique and just wanna share, uh, I'd love to see some of your guys' work. So um, tomorrow we'll be picking up, Chris will be taking over and demonstrating how he uses these techniques to create some pretty interesting portraits. Um, we'll go ahead and show those to you one last time and uh, hope to see you tomorrow.